Hey, what's up guys? I'm Stazzy from Stazzy Art with EP. Uh, I first got into art when I was a very young boy. I started out drawing from a young age. I can't say exactly what age, but like most artists, I started drawing young. And then I moved on to like spray cans, things like that. And then when I got to about 18, 19, I moved on to paint. And I try not to limit myself too much. I just try and do everything I can. Uh, my creativity comes mainly from, I just think the culture I grew up in, in as like a, a working class family in North London, living on an estate, listening to the same old music, like listening to grand music, hip hop. Um, I think everything influences me. The patterns I see as I walk out on the street every day, the holidays I've been on, but mainly the culture that I grew up in, definitely. Describing my style is quite hard because I feel like I feel like, like you said, I've got a few. I don't really try and stick to anything. I label myself as just an artist as a whole. So I can do pencil portraiture to oil painting. I just don't want to limit myself to anything. Not until I find something that I really enjoy doing and then I'll just tunnel vision on that. Uh, Play dot reached out to me. The, the CEO of Play dot reached out to me. Um, and it was quite early when I started the whole art on Instagram. Um, and he basically just let me know my worth. We had a good conversation, we had a reasoning. Um, he just made me see that I shouldn't be doing things like this for free. I've got a skill that not everyone's got. It's something unique. And we kind of got along in the terms of like the way his brand was going. They do a lot of mashup stuff with different characters and different brands and stuff. And um, he just wanted me to be part of that team. And he made me feel comfortable and welcome in the team as well. He was a good guy. Working with Play.Help helped my skills by, it just made it a bit easier to network. By talking to Kenny and Kwasi, it made me realise that it's not actually that bad speaking to other people and getting the information you need and just getting out there a bit more. And I think that really helped me like level up to the next level. And it's still helping me to this day. I was terrible at networking and stuff before, but when people reach out to you, if you learn from them that you can do the same to other people and you can reach out to other people. You need to have a good support network around you. Anything I want to try my hand at, I'll just go for it. And, I, and, and it's all trial and error, it's all experimenting. And I, I notice that every experiment leads to another experiment. So I'll be doing some realistic sort of painting, but then I want to mix it with some illustration like I've done with my sketch piece. Um, and that style is just developing and developing, but hopefully one day I'll have one distinct style, but we'll see. I like to keep it fresh for now. Uh, well, the mask came from, like I said, recreating myself. I wanted to uh, separate myself, not separate myself from other artists, but I wanted to be a, a bit different. I realized my art career all started on Instagram, and I feel like my art career is bigger than that. Like there's stuff outside of Instagram and outside of social media that you can do with art that will expand your horizons. Um, I just feel that Instagram, a lot of the time, seems like it's, it's quite a narcissistic culture. Like, it's more about the person that's doing the art sometimes than the actual art. And in this day and age, I feel like talent sometimes doesn't really speak for itself these days. The reason for this style of mask was, when I was growing up, my brother is the original Stazzy. When I was growing up, we used to look watch a lot of uh, martial arts films, kung fu films and stuff. He was obviously born in the 80s, so there was a lot of kung fu films and stuff. So I just remember we used to just pretend we were ninjas and stuff like that. So I thought it would be appropriate to get myself a little samurai smile. So I looked into like oriental mask design and stuff, and I just came up with something simple. And it's kind of helped me. As much as it's, I've tried to make it less about the artist and more about the art, it's kind of worked in a way where people want to know more about the mask and they want to know who's behind the mask. And so hopefully sometime next year, I might get some masks, start selling the masks. Maybe I'll reproduce new masks. I might bring a new one out every year. We'll just see, we'll see how it goes. I don't want to limit myself to nothing. I was, I was commissioned by an Indian family who visit India every year. And this year they didn't get to go. So they wanted something from a London artist that was gonna combine both cultures to kind of get something to, to represent the year that they didn't go. So it was something from London representing India. And I think I, I'd done it a lot of justice. It was like a, 
a Ganesha illustration on a very rustic sort of background. It's really good, I really love that feature. I've done four or five pieces for Arsenal. Um, the first one was, basically this all started with a few friends who were on a photography course with Arsenal. And the head of the course basically saw what I could do through my friends. So he commissioned me to do a piece of the photography team. So I've done that. Um, and that slowly led on to me meeting more people at Arsenal. Again, like what we were saying about networking, it's good to just keep chatting to the next person, to the next person. And um, from there, yeah, then we got commissioned, I got commissioned to do the 20 year anniversary for Arsene Wenger. Um, and that obviously, that, that was a big, a massive deal for me. Um, and there was a lot of thought behind the painting. I, I didn't want to get it wrong. I had to make sure that it was 100% bang on, you know what I mean? Firstly, I wanted to incorporate the colours of all the kits since he's been in charge. So I used all the kit colours for his hair, for his face, the dark and the light sides of his face. Um, I also felt his suit is quite iconic because he always wears the same suit with a red tie. And so I had to make that realistic, but the rest of his face was all sort of pop art style. Um, I was working closely with the official Arsenal photographer, Stuart McFarlane, and he took a photo and in the background is Wenger with his hands in the air and there's a banner behind him that says Arsene Knows. So I decided to call the piece Arsene Knows based on the photography that I'd seen from him and I'd worked with him closely so I felt it was a bit of a, like a, a tribute to him as well sort of thing. And then the red background dripping down behind him was sort of to signify like him bleeding Arsenal, bleeding red sort of thing. Um, and since then every few months they might get at me for a commission. It could be for someone who works there, it could be for ex-players. I've done a piece of um, an ex-Arsenal player with uh, three World Cup legends, England World Cup legends. Um, and I've also done a, a piece for the Arsenal community, a young boy in my area with dad being killed to death. So um, they commissioned me to, to do that piece, RIP Mahad. And, um, and yeah, his family were well happy with that. And they're very local, they live around the corner from me as well. So it was nice that Arsenal, they, they've got a big presence within the community. So everyone knows everyone where we live. So if I was giving any advice to any artist coming into the scene, I would say keep the right people around you, like-minded people and people that will support and always push you. Um, work hard, like you said, on your craft, constantly experiment. And if you can't do what you want to do in your field, Find another job that is related to your field and do that because a foot in anywhere is a foot in. As long as you've got a foot in and say you can't be an artist but you can be a, um, a helper at a studio where you just help clean the screens for the prints or whatever, just do that. You'll learn something just from being there and slowly you can work your way up. Um, another thing I would say that it might sound a bit harsh but if you can't do something don't spend too much time trying to do the same thing. Just leave it and move on to something else. If, you're not, if you don't feel like that's what makes you happy, that's what you're good at and that's what you can excel at, then move on to something else and just keep it moving. Just keep it in the same field. As long as you're enjoying your life, I would agree that's probably the best thing. I've got a so my first debut solo show should be coming soon hopefully in the new year, the early new year. Um, but I can't say too much about that. There'll be a lot of mixed media, a lot more of me experimenting, but it will mainly be my art, stuff that I want to paint. There won't be any commission work and stuff up there. It'll just be stazzy art and that's it.